I recently had some encounters with uh, some of Canada's intelligence agencies, and that put me in mind of more reasons why you should not talk. And it's always a good time to talk about why you shouldn't speak to the police or to intelligence agencies. So we'll delve into that once again on this week's episode of Don't Talk TV. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wansbutter. I'm a lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Don't Talk TV. So 20 plus years ago when I went to law school, one thing that I never ever thought I'd be doing as a lawyer would be speaking to CSIS agents or RCMP agents with the Integrated Terrorism Assessment Center about people doing things like going for a hike with people who happen to all be white or reading certain books or trying to buy certain books. But it's 2024 and I find myself doing these things on behalf of potential clients who are being investigated, being hassled, being asked to come in for a quick chat with these people. So the most recent one was with the RCMP ITAC, an individual who had attempted to buy a book. I'm not going to say what that book is to try and maximize privacy for that individual, but let's just say it was not the Communist Manifesto nor was it Antifa's anti-fascist handbook, nor was it Black Panther's manifesto or anything like that. So you can probably guess what sort of book it was. Uh, and this drew the attention of our intelligence services. So some of the advice I gave to that individual, I think makes for a good episode. And we've talked about why you shouldn't speak to the police before. But I want to raise three points that we've maybe touched on briefly, but haven't given as much detail as it could have in the past. So the first of these is, quote, I just want to have a short chat, unquote, never ever means I just want to have a short chat. This is a classic ruse used by police. I see it very frequently in criminal law. And it's clearly a favored tactic of intelligence agencies because every time I've come up against this, that's how it all starts. The uh, intelligence officer is saying to the person, oh, I just want to have a chat just to clear a few things up, just so I can put in my memo that you're a good guy and close the file. Never, ever, ever means that. That should be the number one red flag to you. If a police officer, an intelligence agent says to you, I just want to have a short chat, that means it's not going to be a short chat. And it is certainly not going to be anything innocuous. This is them baiting the hook and throwing it into the water and hoping you'll bite it. Because once they've got you in that room for the, quote, short chat, unquote, now they can do whatever they want with you. Now, I mean, when I say whatever the, you want, nowadays it's not acceptable to physically beat people, but psychological forms of torture are completely fair game. And I consider it psychological torture when you've got someone in a room, you're lying to them, you're telling them you've got stuff on them, you're telling them that you've got stuff on their family, you better just give us something or things could get bad for you. Uh, just talking and talking and talking, I think is a form of psychological torture when you're saying, no, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk, and they just keep talking at you, trying to break down your resistance. Uh, this line is always used in fixing in fishing expeditions, and that is your number one sign that what's going on here is a fishing expedition when a law enforcement member says, I just want to have a short chat. So, I mean, that also goes to why you shouldn't engage in the short chat. Don't listen to that. Don't go in for the short chat. Don't speak at all, because even the small, once you start talking, that's all they need. Just get you start talking, and next thing you know, you're in a world of hurt. The second point I want to address, and this is something that comes up all the time when I'm talking to people, especially people who are just regular citizens that never dealt with the law before, well, won't it look bad? Won't it make me look guilty if I decline to go and speak to the police? The answer from a legal perspective is absolutely not, because you do have the right to silence, and the right to silence means that there's no consequences for being silent. That's what a right means. So they cannot legally do anything to you if you remain silent. Now, sure, that individual officer is probably going to think you're guilty as sin by the fact that you don't want to talk to them, but even if you did go and talk to them, they'd think you're guilty as sin. So it's not like you're really any worse off by not talking to them, but it can make an absolutely massive difference with how things play out for you of silence versus going and having a talk. Because even if you go in 
and especially with these intelligence types, when you're talking to terrorism task force people, if they quote unquote think you're lying, which they will, uh, if you if they even want to talk to you and you tell them innocent explanations, they're going to think you're lying. And then they can put into an information to obtain a search warrant, based on my years of experience, this person is being dishonest and this therefore heightens my suspicions and we need to do a search warrant. And the chances are much higher if you talk to them and give them an innocent story and they don't believe you, of having your door kicked in in the middle of the night by a tack team and uh, and them raiding your house and taking you and your family out by gunpoint. Whereas if you're silent, they put that into an information to obtain a search warrant, a judge has no ability to grant them a warrant on that basis because they cannot take your silence as anything untoward. So that silence is absolutely golden. If you want to avoid bad consequences like getting your door kicked in at 2 a.m., don't talk to the police, especially if it's CSIS or RCMP ITAC or the RCMP Anti-Hate Task Force or someone like that who's coming to talk to you rather than just regular run-of-the-mill police. But my advice holds across the board, don't talk to the police. That will always, always be better for you. I, in 20 years, I have yet to see a case where speaking to police did not hurt a client, at least in some way, which kind of, kind of segues into my third point of you are not smarter than the police. Uh, While well, you may be smarter than the police, but you're certainly not more experienced than the police or CSIS or RCMP ITAC or other intelligence agency. These people, they do this for a living, interrogating people, tricking them, manipulating them, coercing them, getting them to say things that they wouldn't otherwise say and getting them to incriminate themselves, even if they're innocent, is what these people do for a living. No one has that level of experience. You are not going up against these people day in and day out they are day in and day out making people talk and gathering intelligence on people and spying on them. So you are not going to be able to play this game and win. I mean, it's like a house league, beer league guy going and playing against even a you know fourth liner in the NHL. They're going to skate circles around you and absolutely destroy you. That's what's going to happen if you enter into that octagon, figuratively speaking, with an intelligence agent or even a run-of-the-mill police officer so don't don't use your belief in your own intelligence I mean you may be very highly intelligent but again you're not a professional at at this interrogation process they are professionals so that once again that's another reason why you should never ever engage never ever speak to them what you should do is call a lawyer. One of the most effective tactics, probably the most effective tactic I've found is when people give me a call and then I call back that officer and say, hello, I'm Nicholas Wansbutter. I'm a lawyer. Here's my law society number. And uh, you know, I've, I understand you want to speak to this person. I'm calling to tell you that based on my advice, he is not talking to you or she is not talking to you. And that tends to be an end to the matter because they know, okay, this person's smart enough to lawyer up they're most likely going to be smart enough not to fall for anything. So I guess we better move on to an easier target. So uh, that said, I mean, this episode is legal advice insofar as it's standing advice for me to never, ever speak to the police. But of course, for any specific situation, you need advice that's informed and specific to that situation. So call a lawyer. If you want me to be that lawyer, my contact information is listed below. Uh, if, if there's any show topics you'd like to see us cover, please send suggestions to the email address listed below or in the comments box. And if you found this video at all interesting, helpful, or informative, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and following us on social media.